Kane, are you ready for your close-up? Oh yeah, work it, Kane. All right, so just like we can use these cameras for all kinds of things, so can people who are studying volcanoes. So what we're gonna learn about today is what kind of tools do they use and who are these people that study volcanoes? So let's go ahead and get into this lesson for today. All right, we are on lesson five. And today, let me set my camera down. And today we're reading pages 28 through 31. So our learning intention for today is we are learning to use details and draw inferences to help us understand what we are reading. So we know we are successful today, fourth graders, when we can go back in the text for clues and we can make an inference. Now really quick, what is an inference? Do you guys remember? Yeah, good job. So it is when you take that text evidence you use your schema or what you already know and you make that inference. Great job, fourth graders. So today we're still working with prefixes. We're working with tele, trans, amphi, and anti. So let's go ahead and just kind of review them really quick. So satellites are a form of telecommunication that scientists use to gather information about volcanoes. So which prefix are we working with, fourth graders? Yeah, we're working with that first prefix, tela. And hopefully you guys remember, what does tela mean? Good job, guys. It means over a long distance. So what would telecommunications mean? Yeah, I agree. It means communicating over a long distance. Great job. So communicating over a long distance, they use this to gather information about volcanoes. Why would they need to be at a long distance? Hmm, that's a good question. All right, so let's look at another prefix. Antifreeze is used to keep my car from getting too cold and freezing. So which prefix are we working with now, fourth graders? Great job, it is anti. Do you guys remember what anti means? Good job, anti means you're against or opposed to something. So if you're anti-freeze, it's helping my car do what? Yeah, it works against my car freezing and then not working, so that is something important. Well, let's do one more. What do you guys think? Your grades and classes are listed on your transcript. So which prefix are we working with, fourth graders? Yep, we're working with that prefix trans. So, do you guys remember what it means? Yep, trans means across, beyond, or to another place. So what would transcript mean? It means it's a written report of something that is being sent to another place. So if you're switching schools, they might send your transcripts so that that school knows what you're like in school. All right, so for your foundational skills today, you're gonna read this story, Fantastic Frogs, and it just has amphi and anti in it. So frogs are some of the most common animals in the world. They can be found in every region except Antarctica. So go ahead and read that on your own and tape yourself because it's always fun to listen to yourself read and see what can you get better at, what are you really good at, all right, vocabulary, Miss Lawson's favorite. So what is this word we're working with today? Yeah, I'm seeing there's kind of this D-I at the beginning, so diverted, so that E-D, it means it already happened. So in this picture, we have diverted traffic. So something about traffic. And then from the story today, we have ash clouds are dangerous to fly through. Planes are diverted if scientists determine there is an ash cloud in their path. So what could diverted mean? Let's see if you're right, fourth graders. To turn aside or form a path, of course, or a new path, of course, right? I didn't say that very clearly. So basically, if you're going one way, you might have to be diverted and to turn and form a different path or course. We got a little bit of typos there. 
But what do you guys think a synonym would be for diverted? If you're having to go a new way. Yeah, a synonym, it means the same. So a word that means the same as diverted could be, you know, um, a different route. So, um, man, I'm having a hard time with that one. Fourth graders, help me out. So that's a good one. Okay, so change. Yeah, you're changing paths. Man, some of you fourth graders are really good at this. And what about an antonym? Antonym, it means the opposite. What do you think that? Yeah, if you're not diverted, you're staying on course, right? You're continuing on. So that could be an antonym. Now, here's the challenge you gotta do without me. Can you use that word in a sentence? I know you can do it, fourth graders. Okay, so today, like I said earlier, we are reading about the people that study these volcanoes. So it's called chapter three, Volcanology, studying volcanoes. The study of volcanoes and their eruptions is called volcanology. Most volcanologists have graduated, have graduate and doctorate degrees in geology or volcanology. They work in offices and laboratories. They also work on or near volcanoes. Geological investigations. One way volcanologists study volcanoes is by studying a volcano's lava. They measure the temperature of fresh lava, they study the makeup of lava. They also study the age of old volcanic rocks to determine how long ago eruptions occurred. So we got a scientist down here studying a lava flow in Hawaii. Look at that stick they're like using to study maybe the temperature like they were saying up here. And then up at the top, we have geologists studying Mount St. Helen from far away kind of. Seismology investigations. Many times earthquakes occur before, during, and after volcanic eruptions. Volcanologists study these earthquakes to learn more about volcanic eruptions. Volcanologists use seism seismographs to study earthquakes. These tools give information about the location, size, and strength of an earthquake. And I made a connection. We've already learned about that, right? So a seismograph is an instrument that detects ground motion and measures how strong it is. Okay, let's talk about satellites. Satellites orbit Earth and take pictures of our planets, of our planets, of our planet. These pictures give scientists information about events such as volcanic eruptions. Volcanologists can look at satellite images to track ash clouds, see pyroclastic flows, and determine the size of eruptions. Tracking ash clouds is very important, especially for airlines. Ash clouds are dangerous to fly through. Planes are diverted, there's that word, if scientists determine there's an ash cloud in their paths. Satellite images also help volcanologists find possible hotspots in Earth's crust. This helps them predict where future volcanic eruptions might occur. Plate tectonics. Earth's crustal plate movements account for most volcanic activity on this planet. So volcanologists also study plate tectonics. They examine Earth at convergent plate boundaries and divergent plate boundaries. Volcanoes often produce large local ground movements. Scientists also look at how Earth is moving at fault lines. Okay, so here are those tools, and it says they use seismographs, GPS instruments, video and still cameras, infrasound microphones, lightning detection equipment, infrared cameras, infrared cameras, cameras on robots, thermometers, and tools that measure volcanic gases. So they use lots of different tools. A geologist uses equipment to study a volcano in Washington. We've got a GPS unit, and down at the bottom it says, water tilt meters are used to detect changes in the slope of a volcano's surface. All right, so today we're working with some context clues. So as you read, you will find words you don't understand. That happens all the time, right? So these words may be specific to a subject or area of study. 
these words are called domain specific words. And I know you've learned about these before. Authors often use domain specific words when writing about technical or scientific subjects. So obviously we're reading science, right? So good readers use context clues and images to help them figure out the meaning of these words. So let's go back and practice, fourth graders. So let's start off with this short little paragraph. What clues in this first paragraph help you determine the meaning of volcanology? I'll give you a few seconds to read through that paragraph. All right, fourth graders, hopefully you found it and you've paused your video for more time. So studying volcanoes. The study of volcanoes and their eruptions is called volcanology. So right there, that is the clue that I need because they say it is called, well, the study of volcanoes and their eruptions. That is volcanology. So that would be the clues where I figured it out. And then when we learn more is that they say, you know, these people that study volcanoes, they have degrees. They also, they could work in an office. They could work in a laboratory. They could work near a volcano. So they look different. So let's look at some text features also. So what do the headings, so remember the headings are, you know, these part right here. What are the headings? Geological investigations, seismology investigations, satellites, and plate tectonics tell you about how the author organizes the information in this chapter. So think back, let's pause it here. What do these different headings tell us about how this is organized. And hopefully you paused your video to give yourself some time to think. But if we look at it studying volcanoes, they can do geological investigations, they can use seismology investigations, they can use satellites, they can use plate tectonics. So the way they're organizing it, fourth graders, is they're telling us all the different ways that these size, well, these scientists is what I was going to call them, but they're actually volcanologists. They're telling us the different ways that they can study those volcanoes. So that is how it's organized. All right, it's your turn, fourth graders. Use text details to make that inference. Why volcanology is an important area of study. So go back in that text and find some details and make an inference. Why is this study of volcanoes and their eruptions important to us. Have a great rest of your day, fourth graders. See you next time.